Hello, Roar Mithril here once again, getting back to Silent Hill 3. Before we continue on, let's go have a look at the extra options. This game has some rather interesting ones that I want to take a look at here. We have the usual blood color with, well, for whatever reason, the normal colors they give it. Green, violet, black, or normal. That seems a strange set of colors to give with nothing else. You also have blood volume, which is kind of amusing. <laughs> Little for those that don't like it, normal for what we've seen, or much just for pure ridiculousness. You have the walk-run control that you can change at your will as to if you want to walk or run by default. You can start your map zoomed out or zoomed in on where you are. Noise effect. I'm actually going to get rid of that. It should make the image a bit clearer. Display mode. I wonder what the distinction is there. I'm going to try putting that on sharp. We also have bullet adjust. I can only take it up to times two for now. Kind of a nice thing. The more times you beat the game, the more you can advance this so that as you find boxes of ammo, you get double, triple, quadruple what should normally be in there. I'm not quite sure how high it actually goes up. And we also have beginner's mode. Well, we're going to leave that off. Huh. There's another option that I thought should be unlocked, but I guess that comes later. We'll eventually get to that. But we'll see what those options do anyway. And so we'll begin Extra New Game. It asks us to set the options. Go ahead and put action level up to hard now, and riddle level this time we'll be going with normal. Some people were asking if I was going to show the actual cutscene opening for the game, the one that plays actually before the title comes up. To be honest, I don't really see a need to do so. I wouldn't really have much to say during it, and all it would likely result in is another video that would be blocked in Germany. Now here's an interesting point to the uh, the new Game Plus kind of thing here, is you don't have to go through the nightmare. It immediately starts with Heather waking up at the Happy Burger. So you can at least skip that part of the game. Speaking of skipping, we've already seen this. Yay for the ability to skip cutscenes. Including this one. So, going to our inventory, we're stripped back down again. But oh, that won't last for too long. We got the unlimited submachine gun. Yep, they throw it at you that fast. Fires unlimited rounds. No submachine gun bullets necessary. Heck yeah. Never have to stop to reload. Man, is that satisfying. And really the next few things I have to show off are pretty close to the start, so we'll go ahead and do that. So as I'm walking through here to discuss the requirements for unlocking the unlimited submachine gun, that's why I was being absolutely certain I got the last strike on the god with the mall. To unlock the unlimited submachine gun, all you have to do is actually finish off the god with a melee strike. Whatever else you do to the god while you're fighting it doesn't matter, it's just that final hit. And you may have just noticed something while I was running through the hall. Here on hard difficulty, Heather will indeed face plant on walls. Except she didn't there for some reason. There we go. 
That's going to make certain things a bit harder, such as, say, escaping the red mist later at the amusement park. Wonderful. Thought we were going to get away with not doing that. Apparently not. Cutscene, killing the closer. So yes, thanks to Bullet Adjust, that gave me 20 bullets, whereas I guess it would normally just give me 10. But, pff, we don't need that. Go ahead and get the map. Time for some volunteers to demonstrate this thing. Or at least one. That's going to be a pretty handy thing to have around. Now for perhaps one of the most obtuse ways to get a special weapon. I did after all unlock two. <laughs> Don't face plant the wall, dear. All the way at the end of the hall here, on this door we can't open. What a weird doorknob. I bet I could oof, take it off. We get a beam saber. Yep. A sword shining with a strange force. A switch turns the blade on and off. Pfft. A strange force? Oh, you. One drawback to the beam saber is every time you get out of your ready stance, you have to remake the blade. So, that can be somewhat problematic. Let's see if we can actually find someone to use this on. Or closer. If nothing else, it is a fairly powerful weapon. Whoa, hey, you guys are fast now. Saber is still a decent weapon. It can be pretty nice. So another fairly minor change that can be noted here in a new game plus. This used to be called Cafe Turn Mill, but now it's called Cafe Paradise Noon. Paradise? Did Claudia go and open up a cafe? Anyway, since it won't take too terribly long, I may as well go ahead and do the, uh... all the rigmarole to get to the book puzzle as long as we're here. It won't take too terribly long. Just have to get the bread tongs... Go ahead and equip. 
equip that again, because hey, why wouldn't you? I'm still okay as far as health, I suppose. Okay, go ahead and get the key. Skip the cutscene, because yeah. a little bit with the unlimited submachine gun, which is quite useful. Pretty much the only unfortunate part there is that uh, you can't actually move while firing. But you can aim wherever you please with it. Right, to the bookstore. Things are a little bit different this time. Not overly so, but still. We have a note next to the door this time. Fair is foul, and foul is fair. Put these books out of order. Yeah, this time it's not so simple as just putting the books where they go. This time, the books have little markings on the spine. Let's see here. The markings on the spine tell you where they go in order, because you have to actually make the code that's on them. Like, this one doesn't have anything toward the right. So, we start making the eight. Essentially, this one's just trial and error so that you can actually see the code being made on the spines. 3, 4, 5, 8. And there we go. And with that, I think we can actually take a short break for a little bit until the next thing I'll need to show.